All right, it's the end of the session. This is Dottie, and this is Jerry, and this is their roadmap to success. This is a treat in my hand. This is why they're costing it. Um, primarily, we worked here with Dottie. Dottie has bit, uh, bit somebody. Uh, it wasn't a bad bite. I think it was a territorial bite. I think in her mind, she thinks she's in charge of the humans, and the humans don't see her as an authority figure. They don't know what to look, didn't know what to look for before, and uh, so they don't respond to her as an authority figure. Just like a parent who has a child that misbehaves and doesn't listen to the parent, that stresses out the parent. And so I think she's stressed out. She has cortisol in her blood. She's a schnauzer, a beautiful schnauzer. Um, but I think that the, she, she's doing a lot of this barking to communicate she disagrees with things. And nobody's listened to her. And so she just keeps on barking and barking and barking. I think she's got cortisol in her blood. And she, like I said, her biggest problem is I think she's confused as her position in the family. So uh, during the session, yes, yeah, hey, buddy. Uh, we went over uh, ways to flip what I call the leader follower dynamic. Uh, now, uh, the video that we shot was, what did we shoot the video for? I can't remember. We shot a video uh, on, Sorry. it's been a long, she's been barking the whole time pretty much, so I've forgotten. It will come to me. Um, but we, well, I started off by talking about exercise. They're under exercise right now. He's exercised because his guardians think he's a little bit overweight. Not, I am too buddy, so don't take it personally. <laughs> um, but they were exercising late at night. And she really runs around with a lot of fury in the backyard. But she doesn't do a lot of, uh, 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 it, it's okay exercise, but she's doing a lot of hunting uh, back there as opposed to doing things that we'd like her to see her doing, uh, you know, playing and interacting with the humans. Uh, exercising a dog is really important. Dogs need a lot of exercise sprinkled throughout the day. Um, playing with each other is okay, but he's a much more mellow dog. So taking her for a walk, um, uh, and also like we, we pull out a laser, she seemed to be interested in laser for a little bit. Um, having, she's afraid of stairs, uh, so we can't really throw them up and down the stairs. But whatever it is, uh, just we want to make sure we give her a reasonable amount of, amount of exercise. I talked to the guardians about starting an exercise journal, so make sure you do that for about two to four weeks. I'm going to write down the times, whatever you did, and at the end of the day, give a letter grade and keep on varying those things up until both dogs end up with an A. And once they have an A, then you know exactly what you need to get do to get them uh, the proper amount of exercise. Exercising is, her isn't going to fix her problems, but it's going to make fixing her problems a lot easier to manage. Um, we also talked about flipping the leader through and follower dynamic by enforcing some rules. So one of the first rules I suggest is really not an issue for her. She doesn't get the furniture. Um, but another rule that I have is uh, teaching the uh, not allowing the dog to go out the door unless it sits first. Go to the door and say sit. If it doesn't sit within three seconds, I will walk away. Remember, don't repeat commands over and over. The more you repeat it, the less you need it. Uh, if she doesn't sit when the, first, when the three seconds of walking the door, walk away, sit down, wait one minute, and go back to the door and tell her to sit again. If she doesn't sit this time, then I walk away for two minutes. Next time for four minutes, and then for eight minutes. So each time she doesn't comply, she has to wait twice as long before she gets another opportunity. And as soon as she sits, I open that door like there's no control in her butt. But if he sits and she doesn't, which would be ironic because he was, didn't know how to sit before we started the session, we fixed that. Um, but uh, if he sits and she doesn't, then he gets to go out and she doesn't get to go outside. Um, start with whatever direction they really want and then do it in both directions. I'm guessing you probably haven't had her on somebody else's lap like this. No. Um, and she's not marking, which we like, and she's kissing, me, which we also like. Um, all right, so other rules, not being allowed to be within three feet of the human, who, uh, seven feet, excuse me, of the human who's eating, not being allowed in the kitchen when we're preparing food. So remember, use those escalating consequences, hey, sweetheart, that I talked to you about to move her out of the kitchen. Start with the lowest one possible and move your way up it, uh, until you get to the effect that you want. Always outlast your dog. Yes, it always outlast you. Every time we don't outlast the dog, we teach the dog to be defiant and to keep on pushing our boundaries. So there, there's going to be a tipping point the guardian is going to have to really be strict about for a certain couple of days to a week or two before she kind of realizes they ain't giving up now. And at that point, then she'll start giving up and surrendering faster and faster. Um, I, we also went over, let me see, other rules. Um, I mean, uh, eating, we're going to feed them after this, and we're going to do a structured uh, meal. Uh, but uh, the human needs to eat something first, then he should eat something. When he's eating, she's not allowed in the kitchen. When he's done eating, he needs to leave the kitchen, and she goes and eats. Now, she, they both eat food really, really fast. So I talked to the guardians about possibly floating their food, or just putting, you want to get down? Where are you, where are you going, sweetheart? You want to give me some kisses, huh? Uh, so basically, uh, what, what we're going to do is put food, uh, warm water in with their food about an hour before mealtime. And that will uh, kind of make it into a mush. And that way she can't kind of gobble it. Oh, that's what you turn around because you can, you can feel the, the treats are there. Uh, smell the treats where they're at. Here, I'll, give it, I'll tell you what. Let's redirect you this way so we don't end up with a hole in one pocket. Yes. Uh, there we go. There you go. How about right there? She, her eyes are not very good. Uh, 
So basically, all right, we're going to go ahead and get down there. Oh, there we go. She's like, I didn't want to get up there in the first place. All right, you get the treat, buddy. Um, so uh, when she, like I said, when one dog's eating, we're not going to let the other dog in there. But floating her food will, will hold, uh, for both of them, uh, not necessarily floating, but letting it absorb that water, and you can mix it up like mashed potatoes, they won't be able to eat it as fast. That might help slow down the eating deal. Also, adding structure will help with that. Uh, hey, sweetheart, you want back up now? Um, all right, we also talked about petting with the purpose of pet training. If I pet her when she does this, I'm training her that pet, jumping up on me is the best way to ask for attention. So instead, what, when the dog does this, what I would have you do is go like, sit, sit. So I said sit twice, once during the command stage, once during the reward stage. If I were to give her a treat, I would give her the treat and then I'd start, uh, I would, uh, give her the treat and then say the command word after. Always say the command word after the treat goes in the mouth. Helps the dog uh, look a little bit more favorably on it. Now she's probably going to protest and say, this is BS, why was he up there, why am I not up there? That's okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, so the more that we pet with a purpose and redirect the dog to do something we want, after a while the dog will start offering that behavior on its own. Uh, and make sure you pet it when it does and recognize your reward. And otherwise the dog will go back to jumping up or barking or doing the other things that do get your, your, att your attention. Also, passive training matters. Um, so every time the dogs do something we want, we want to make sure we pet them within three seconds and reward them by saying whatever the command word is or associate the command word by saying whatever it is. So if she were to walk over to me on her own volition right now, I'd reach over and pet her and say, come. If I ask her to come and she does, that's okay too, but I want to get the humans to get in the habit of petting the dogs and giving them attention for the desired action and the things that we want as opposed to when they steal things, which is the video that we did above, teaching the dog to drop. So what we do is wait for the dog to do the thing we want, and then we, I call this light switch on, light switch off. So when she's, she comes and she sits, I'm getting her attention. As soon as she starts barking, the attention stops. Um, after a while, if you're consistent with this, after a while the dog will stop barking the bad behavior and transition to good behavior, because that's what works. Most of us do a really poor job of telling our dog what it can do to make us happy, and that confuses the dog, and then they continue doing that for the rest of their life, the wrong thing. So now the guardians know not to pet uh, for the demanding attention and to reward and recognize desired actions, but also um, uh, to assign the command words so we create that vocabulary. Now I also went over a leadership exercise with the guardians. We didn't shoot, uh, shoot video that I used to shoot with all my clients. I haven't done it in a long time, so I didn't give uh, the guardians filming this right now. Very good instructions. He had a little bit of a rough start, but he did a really great job. Uh, she did great with it. I thought she would take a lot longer than she actually did. Um, I would like you guys to continue practicing that. When you do it in the future though, Stand like in the middle of the room and toss the treat in towards your kitchen or toward this direction so you can back up and eventually you can sit down on the couch or the chair. Make sure you do not sit down until the dog sits down first. Once she figures this out, she's gonna start laying down faster and faster to get that treat. Remember, keep, keep your, uh, remember there's a string, pretend like there's a string from your belly button to her collar. Wherever she goes, let it uh, turn your hips towards it. You can move your feet, but do it as little as possible. Try to just move your torso. Um, and as soon as she lays down, then we kneel down next to it, about a foot, foot away, give her permission to have it. After she starts laying down right away, then once she lays down, wait like five seconds, and then go over and give her permission to have it. Remember to say the B word, we say booty, you can change it to something else if you want later. Uh, but eventually, at first we were kneeling down completely to the floor. After a while, you can just kind of crouch next to it. Then you can just kind of bend, stoop down next to it. And eventually, you can just say the word booty without even having to get up off the couch. I like people doing this between the couch and the TV because we spend a lot of time watching TV. If you put it in the middle of the room, toss it this way, and she's over here staring at you, you get to sit down and make her wait, and she's waiting while you're watching TV. If she goes up to go in the treat, you get the treat, she goes in your line of sight. The idea is I'd like the guardians, once she starts laying down right away, start asking, ask her to wait five seconds before you let her have it, then give her permission to have it. And do that maybe once or twice, then do 10 seconds, then do 15 seconds. Once I get to 15 seconds, I usually go 15, 30, 45 seconds, then one through 10 minutes. Now, she, when she's laying down, she can lay down, crash, uh, passive training. Uh, so when she lays down over here, I start the clock, but let's say she lays down here for three minutes and gets up and walks and goes and lays down over there. As long as she doesn't try to take the treat, the clock runs. As soon as she tries to get it and I have to stand up and defend it, then we reset the clock. The idea is to get her and to help her practice. Just because I want something doesn't mean I get it. I have to wait for the humans to give me permission to do it. Now remember to practice the, the video above. I'm not going to describe it because it's all there. I don't think it's resource guarding. I think it's just she just is a little bit confused and uh, barking and being aggressive and gotten away. So remember to help her practice dropping things. High val uh, low value items first and then eventually high value items. And if you do it enough, when she gets a sock or something she's not allowed to have, you say drop and she'll spit it out and come over to you to get that treat. Um, okay, let me think, what else do we went over? Um, 
We went over a lot of other things, uh, but I really think that uh, upping her exercise is going to be a big, uh, is going to really help with this. Also, uh, when she kind of darts at him, be mindful of that. The Guardians have kind of been like, well, we're going to let him sort it out. He's just a mellow dog. We don't want him to learn to be out of his balance or his comfort zone to correct her. So we want to take care of that for him so that he sees that we've got his back and she sees we're not letting her go too far. When she pushes the boundaries, that's her way of testing to see what's allowed and what's not allowed. And also when she gets really rambunctious, instead of interpreting that as being rambunctious, we should interpret that as she needs a little exercise. So take the laser out or throw the ball or whatever the case may be. Come up with funny command words like the guardians to try to teach the dogs to do some new tricks and commands. The more commands and tricks the dog knows, the more confident it will be, the less reactive it will be. Most reactive or aggressive dogs are very insecure. So we teach her, what I'd like to see the guardians do is practice, uh, take turns. Each week on Sunday or Monday or whatever day of the week, one of the guardians goes to the YouTube, finds out how to teach the dog to roll over, then practices, teaches the dogs how to do that, teach them both, and then teaches the other guardian, and then all week long we practice that one exercise. The next Saturday or Sunday or whatever it is, the next guardian takes over, and then they teach a trick, and then practice it the rest of that week. Don't do too hard of tricks, do easy ones, but one of them should be a stay. Stay is one that's, it is a hard one, it takes a lot of practice, but it's a great one for developing self-control. Same thing with balancing a treat on the nose or having it walk around you. There's some easy ones, but make sure you have some fun with them. Come up with fun command words. It should be one word command, uh, not, com not some, uh, common word or a word that sounds like another word. Sit. Sit. Now, if she's barking, you can pull out a treat and put it in front of her nose to direct, redirect her attention, but don't give her the treat. She has to be not barking for at least three seconds. So if she's barking, I will wave the treat in front of her nose, tell her to sit when she sits. Maybe ask her to crash and then pop the treat in your mouth afterwards where you have three seconds of silence. Also use passive training. Uh, for when each dog eats, I would give us each dog a unique command word. I say grub, chow, feast, and eat. So when the dog whose word it is to feast, takes his first bite, he hears the word feast once. So when he hears feast, there's food in his mouth. The other dogs hear feast, there's no food in their mouth. So it doesn't mean the command word to them. So eventually it's nice to be able to release the dogs just one, one at a time just by saying a command word. Uh, also come up with a, I didn't mention this during the session, but come up with a naughty dog name. The dog, when she's doing something you don't want, instead of saying her name, well that can create some ambiguity or confusion about her name. So my dog's name is Quest. If he does something I don't like, I call him Ru Rufus. And so I say sit, he doesn't sit. I say Rufus, he sits down right away. So it helps separate those two. So when you're doing these commands, try to come up with some fun, unique command words. Make a list of the command words, put them on the wall or somewhere so you guys are, recognize them. Do little post-its. If it's like letting the dog out the door, put a post-it, sit. You're begging, sit. Or you can, and that could be passive training. I could pet and say grovel. So grovel means come and stick your chin up, grovel. So if you do that every time she does that, just like I taught my dog to grumble, you can teach her to beg or grovel or whatever it is. You can also name the toys. Now I also have, uh, I want to sum, uh, summarize, I've got one out summarized, but I finish this up by, I come up with the watch words. So I say paycheck if I suspect somebody may be petting without a purpose. That person stops petting, Tells the dog to sit, that's under the chin whenever possible, and says the command word. And then we told the other person, I asked him to sit before he came in and you didn't see uh, you know, uh, what Jerry was doing, um, it, or her. Uh, also, I say recognize or reward or testify if the dog is doing something we missed. So it gives us an opportunity to do that, do it right away, remember that three second window. Uh, and if you missed the three second window, just get to it as soon as you can. You'll help yourself get into a habit of doing that. Um, I also say repeat or rerun if we're saying the same command word over and over. The more we say it, the less we mean it. So we're getting out of only saying it once. All right, well, uh, this is Jerry, and uh, let me see if I can get Dottie to come. Dottie, use a kissing sound, and I use this hand motion to get a dog to come watch. As soon as she looks at me, I go ahead and film her and me. There you go. The lower you go and watch for the dog, then I go over the dog's head. When they sit, I lower it, let them lick it off my hand. I say sit or come or whatever the command word is. If the dog comes to me, I would pet it and reward it for coming, not for sitting, because sitting is easier. You could do either one, but sitting is, coming is more difficult. Also, one last little thing, she doesn't like to always come inside when she's outside in the backyard. So what I would do is every once in a while when she's outside having a good time, go out there with one treat, walk 10 paces off your deck, say come, when she comes, give her the treat, say come, pet her on her chin, we'll let her go back and play. Go back inside, come out a minute later, and this time come out nine feet then eight feet, seven feet, six feet. Eventually she'll come straight up to you to get that treat and then we let her continue playing. Most of us, when we call our dogs to come in, they're having fun and we ask them to come in and then the fun ends. So by helping her understand, passive training will help with that a lot, but if she doesn't come in, that's a real quick, easy way to fix that particular problem. 
Um, get some tricky trainer tr chicken liver treats. Make sure you rip the air out of them. Go to the green spot. Get some. I would get like some kneecaps, some uh, uh, tracheas, some cow's ears, some bull penises. We call them bully sticks. Uh, all those things are great for dogs to chew on, and it's a great thing for them to have. If you have guests come over and the dog always gets one of those high value items, that could also be a positive association with guests. Sit. Uh, now I'm hoping that uh, through just simply shifting the leader following dynamic that both of these guard the dogs uh, uh, get, well really, uh, that, that Dottie gets over her problems. Uh, but if uh, things continue to make sure you text or call me, we might need to set up a follow-up session for her once we get to her done with the demand barking. Dottie, sit. This is Dottie. Let's see if we can get a sit out of you without a treat. Up. Jerry, sit. I know Dottie. He did it, he didn't. Or he, you did it, he didn't. Let's see, so let's use the treat. So I'm touching his nose with a treat, just going up. Always keep the treat within an inch of the dog's nose. As soon as he sits, if he backs away, then I take it away. And so I want him to track, and as soon as he sits down, he'll get the treat. Come on, buddy, I'm almost out of camera space. Let's do it sideways anyways, come on. Top. I'm gonna finish this up with a good sit, buddy. I'm gonna dance. Up, come on. <laughs> well, I will get it, but I don't want to have people watching it forever. This is uh, Jerry. <laughs> Donnie's like, I can help with that. Uh, this is Jerry, this is Donnie, and this is the roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.